Hi, I'm going to show you how to calculate the electric field due to a configuration of point charges. So I have a one nanocoulomb point charge here, a one nanocoulomb point charge here, and I'm going to try to determine the net electric field at this location. So uh, what is, when I take the summation of the electric fields, due to each of these individual point charges, what is it going to be? It's a vector property of space that we can calculate. Okay, so we have a formula for the magnitude of the electric field due to a point charge, and it looks like this. It is electric field, we use symbol E for that, is KQ over R squared. Okay, the K is the uh, is a constant, it's 8.99 times 10 to the 9th Newton meters squared per coulomb squared. Q is the magnitude of the charge, and R is the distance. We're looking for a magnitude here, everything needs to be positive. So even if you had a negative number, you wouldn't uh, throw that into that formula. Um, okay, so uh, we can, for uh, the first electric field, which I'm going to call the field from this charge object here, uh, I'm just going to, I can just throw in numbers into the formula, just taking care to use SI units and be good to go. So 8.99 times 10 to the 9th for the constant associated with electricity. Q is 1 nanocoulomb, so 1 times 10 to the 9th coulombs. And then the distance is in centimeters, I'm going to convert that to meters, so 0 0.05 meters. Square that. I throw that into my calculator and it spits out 3600 newtons per coulomb. Okay, that isn't a huge electric field. Um, the, you, we can get thousands of newtons per coulomb. It's not a, an extreme value. Okay, it just turns out that the newton per coulomb is a fairly small unit in, in given our SI units. Okay, so uh, electric field is a vector, so you need to point out the direction. Um, it'll point away from positive charge and towards negative. This is a positive charge, so E1 will point this way. Okay, so that's E1, and so everything's on the x-axis. It's going to be pretty easy to do the vector arithmetic for that one. Okay, so let's do uh, electric field 2, so I'm calling this the second charged object. I should probably put subscripts there. Um, Second charge object, well, same formula, KQ2 over R2 squared, okay, just slightly different data. Uh, the distance, I do need to calculate using the Pythagorean theorem, so I'm going to skip over showing you how to do that. That's something I assume you know, know how to do, so uh, we need to measure this, or determine this distance. It turns out that it's 11.18 centimeters, so we take square root of the sum of the squares. Okay. So I know the distance, I know the charge, I can calculate the magnitude of the electric field. 8.99 times 10 to the 9th uh, just happens to be the same amount of charge, so 1 times 10 to the minus 9 for the Q, and then the distance is uh, converted to SI units 0.1118 meters, and I throw that into my calculator and it spits out 720 newtons per coulomb. Okay, that's only half the story for electric field. I need a magnitude and a direction. So the direction is going to be up to the right, away from the positive charge. Okay, I didn't draw that length to scale, but that's okay. So E2 points up to the right. Uh, what is this angle from the x-axis? Okay, well that happens to also be this angle right here. I'm going to call it phi. So what is the uh, angle. Well, we've got a, a right triangle here, so I can use uh, trigonometry to determine phi, and so phi will just be the inverse tangent of the adjacent over the opposite. So adjacent of 5, I'll go ahead and convert to SI, 0 0.05 and 0 0.10, and I get an answer of 63.43 degrees. Okay, so I've got magnitude and direction for each of these. Uh, the goal here was to calculate the net electric field. In order to do that, I have to convert to uh, x and y components. So E1x, the x component of the first one, will just be 3600 because it's pointing along the x-axis, so the conversion to x and y components is pretty trivial. And E1y will be equal to zero. There is no y component to a vector pointing along the x-axis. And then with E2, okay, I'm going to have to use 
a little bit of trig. So magnitude times cosine of this angle. So this angle is this angle as well, measured counterclockwise from positive x. So I can just use uh, the, uh, the magnitude times cosine of 63.43. I don't have to worry about drawing a triangle or anything. And I get an answer of uh, 322 newtons per coulomb. Okay, and then I do the same thing with the y component, or similar thing, I should say, 720 newtons per coulomb times sine of 63.43, and I get an answer of 644. Okay, so I have x and y components. Now I can add them together. I add 3600 to uh, 322, so summation of the e's, the x components would be 3,600 plus 322, giving me 39.22 newtons per coulomb. And then I can also add the y components, 0 plus 644, giving me 644 newtons per coulomb. Okay, I'm basically done. I've described the vector sum as in terms of x and y components. We might want to convert this to magnitude and direction, so I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. So uh, E, the net electric field magnitude, would be square root of the sum of the squares. So 39.22 squared plus 644 squared. Throw that into my calculator, and it spits out an answer of 39.75. And then if I want an angle, we'll call it theta, so as to distinguish it from this thing, which I called phi. Uh, the direction of this net electric field, I just take uh, inverse tangent of the y component over the x component. And my calculator uh, spits out 9.3 degrees. Okay, and that's the um, angle above horizontal. So that's the, uh, the net electric field. Uh, thanks for watching.